Hi guys, uh, it's so ridiculously hot here in the UK today. It's 31 degrees, it's the first of June, it's 31 degrees here in Cambridgeshire and it's hot. So what the fans on, if you can hear like a whirry noise, that's the fans because without it I'll just be like, Ugh. And the reason that's kind of relevant is because of this video. <laughs> so it doesn't get hot here in the UK, like ever, <laughs> rarely. And when it does, everyone just grounds to a halt because it's just like, oh, I don't know what to do with ourselves. Because unlike a lot of you guys in the States, we don't have aircon in our houses here, which is sucky sucky. And I don't know what 31 degrees C is in Fahrenheit, but it's warm for here. And I have two little bunnies hopping around my feet. They followed me in. They're supposed to be in the kitchen with little fans on. Cheeky little varmints. Um, and yes, if anyone, probably one says, I am wearing a black bra under a light coloured top. Without getting my bingo wings out, this is the only top that's cool at the moment and I don't have a white bra. So this is just how I roll. <laughs> and other than talking to you guys, which I don't know how many hundred of you there are, I'm not seeing anyone. <laughs> which now when you say it out loud, doesn't really hear. I was like, oh, I'm just at home today. Ugh. Anyway, I said in my one of my vlogs and I put on like my social media places, they platforms, social media platforms, that sounds really professional and posh. I put on like Twitter and stuff that um, if anyone has got any questions that they wanted to ask me or John or both of us then please do and I'll film a Q&A because I haven't done one for ages. So today I'm going to be doing my responses to your questions. Um, John had a few and we both had a few so we'll do a separate video for those. Um, but there's two pages full of questions that I've printed out from places that you've asked. So, this is going to be a long video, so just bear that in mind. If you if you ask me a question, though, it's on, it's here, and I will gonna, I'm gonna answer it. And um, I like chatty videos myself, and I know a lot of you do, and I know a lot of you hate them. So, just warning, this is gonna be long, right? So, if you don't like long videos, um, let's have a drink. I've got a dead plant next to me as well exciting stuff. It's odd because I can keep myself and animals alive and healthy but plants, oh god I just kill plants. Don't know why. So, oh, so from Facebook, Geraldine asks, do you have a dream you reach for in life or goals? I did. I don't necessarily now because I feel like I'm kind of at a point in my life where I'm really happy and I've worked hard to get here. One of my dreams, um, I've done lots of different things because I could never really find my like true path. So I've always been really creative and I did do some creative um, like educational courses and stuff and then I was like well what am I going to do for a job you know this whole job thing you've got to earn money so I did a degree in H sociology and HR and I worked in HR for like 10 years and I hated it and so I wanted to uh, work for myself doing something creative and something that I love and so I retrained and um, in photography and for a while I was a boudoir photographer. If you don't know what boudoir is, it's basically women in their undies or nudes, um, but tastefully done. I don't do that anymore because things have changed again. You know, things are always changing. And so I think, you know, what you want to do needs to change as well. But I gave up a job in HR that I hated to do photography, which I enjoyed. And then things have changed and moved on. And I feel like now, um, I'm really where I want to be in my life and there are going to be some changes in our life over the next year or so so I just feel like at the moment I don't have any specific goals or dreams I'd really like to get to a point where um, John could work for himself as well rather than for someone else like for himself and from home and maybe be more flexible because what I love about working for myself from home is like the flexible hours and you know, if that meant that he could have, say, when it's a nice sunny day, we could go and do something and then work at night, that would just be so much better. But um, that's kind of like a long-term plan, as it were. 
Um, she also asked, what is your favourite tea? I have so many and the pucker ones come in the most beautiful boxes. I know, right? There's <laughs> so much tea, so little time. I think my overall favourite tea <laughs> in the world is chamomile. Any variation of chamomile and it's always chamomile that I go back to. I just really, really like it. I'm also really into it at the moment. We're growing some different mint bushes. We've got a, an orange mint, a chocolate mint and a normal mint. And um, I'm just picking those and having those in tea. And I'm really enjoying my mint tea at the moment as well. But yeah, right? They come in such really pretty packaging. Um, I'm going to see what them rabbits are because they're up to no good. Ah, rascally rabbits. Right, okay. Uh, Karina Reed asks, where do you go to get your planner and crafting supplies? I live in Cambridgeshire too and I'm struggling as most videos I watch are made by people in the USA. And I have planner envy. <laughs> Keep up the great videos. Thank you. Um... I hear your pain. Um, yeah, it sucks, doesn't it, in here sometimes. And you see all these American videos and they've got like Joann's and Hobby Lobby and Michael's and the Dollar Tree and the Target Dollar Spot and stuff. And over here, don't get me wrong, I love Paper Chase and Paper Chase is great. So um, I would say head to Paper Chase in Cambridge or Milton Keynes, they do online. Um, other places like WH Smith, they do some okay stuff and Wilco's, Poundland. I've noticed that my Tesco's are really slimming down on their um, stationary ranges of late. But some of the supermarkets, like I know Sainsbury's is quite good for um, some of their stationery. But yeah, it sucks. Other than that, I mean, <sighs> Hobbycraft sell, because it's based on hobbies, they have such small sections of everything, don't they? Like Project Life, you have like a tiny little bit and stuff. So hobby, hob, Hobbycraft do some okay stuff, but I tend to find Hobbycraft quite expensive sometimes. I do like the range. Um, there are nearest range in Cambridgeshire is Milton Keynes, um, isn't it? No, is there one in Bedford now? I'm not sure there's one in Bedford, but if not, Milton Keynes. Um, but they also do online, but you don't get as much online as you do in the shop. So they're quite good. Um, more for craft stuff than stationery though. And staples, just to face it, is overpriced and boring most of it now, staples. Um, I hear your pain, I hear your pain. I'm very lucky that I do have a couple of pen pals in America who are very kind and they send me stuff from Target which I'm very grateful to and I love them. Other than that, I totally hear your pain which is why I started up an online shop because I was fed up of not being able to be able to source stuff so that's why I did it. I kind of badgered companies until they let me stock their stuff. Um, yeah, so I totally hear your pain. They're the places that I go to when I go to. To be honest with you, because I've got the online shop now, I tend to not really buy much stuff now. I kind of just keep some of my stock, which is kind of like the benefits of having a little online shop. Um, but yeah, it, uh, Etsy's a good one or eBay, um, dare I say it, a lot of stuff comes from China and it's quite cheap, but it's good some of it, so yeah, I guess for the UK people online, just have to do your shopping online, there's like other, if you want more create crafty stuff, you've got Crafty Charlie and Hey Little Magpie, places like that, they do online as well, um, I hear you, I hear you, <sighs> it sucks. Um, uh, okay, so moving on to, I think that was all the ones from Facebook anyway, sorry if I've missed you on Facebook, I do apologise. So on Instagram, Amy Lodge asks, how did you get started with your Etsy shop? Okay, my Etsy shop was kind of a never intended thing. So if you've been watching my videos for a long time or you've watched some of my early videos, you'll know that I've had a fire pack for a long time. and. I was fed up of not being able to get the inserts that I wanted to because I'm talking a long time I've had fun Max. and so I created and designed my own inserts and I was using them for a long time, long time before social media, you know before I had Mrs Brimbles on social media because before Mrs Brimbles was art planner and crafty stuff I was something else as Mrs Brimbles okay as Mrs Brimbles, I used to do, I used to run 
Um, I used to make and sell bath bombs and natural beauty products like soaps and stuff and I used to run a, a, craft, a local craft studio, I used to run workshops on how to make bath bombs and stuff. So that's why I used the name Mrs Brimbles because it was kind of like cottagey and I already had the domain name which is why I kind of used that name to move it over to what I'm doing now which I kind of regret but it's there and it's stuck. So I had my um, inserts and everything and I started sh you know, sharing them around and a friend one day gave me the push and said why don't you just open up an Etsy shop and sell them on your Etsy shop uh, and, and you never know and I was like oh no one's going to want to buy these and she said like just, just, just do it. Bear in mind they were designed by me, for me, um, I was like okay, fine, okay and I put them up and no one bought them for a while then the next month I had one or two sales and then um, then it just kind of rolled from there and then I added other products on I started painting my own dashboards and making dashboards and selling dashboards and stuff until it got to a point where I still have my Etsy shop but I'm only using my Etsy shop for like my inserts and dashboards and planner charms so handmade items other like stuff like sticky notes and stickers and project life cards all that kind of stuff I'm now doing on my a direct online website and that's because two reasons, several reasons. Um, firstly, um, a lot of the companies won't let you sell on any other platforms other than your own direct shop. So to be able to stock Project Life cards or Kate Spade, I have to have my own online shop. Secondly, Etsy take a cut from every sale you make. So um, whilst a recommended retail price of a pack of sticky notes may be say £2.99 and I have to sell them at £2.99, I would only get say £2.50 of that. So in effect I'm losing out um, but I can't put the price up because then that's an a, a unrealistic price for you guys. So in order to like keep it fair for both you as buyers and me as sellers, I've got an online direct online shop now but I'm keeping Etsy for my handmade stuff because that's more what Etsy's about, it's about unique craft type items. So I hope that makes sense. It was a happy, happy accident and one which I absolutely love and love my little Etsy shop. Um, kawaii crazy, when did you buy your first planner and why? Okay, so throughout school, um, school used to issue us with um, our own planners, which is how I got into planning. Every year, uh, sorry, every year? No, every term we used to be given a new planner amazing like for tracking homework and sickness and all that kind of stuff so school really really got us into planning and then when I went to uni I bought myself an academic diary and then when after I graduated I thought well um, I don't need an academic diary anymore um, because most like company years run from January to December or what have you and because you know I'd graduated in like, the summer and stuff I decided to get myself a file of facts so that I could move dates around and in and out and stuff so that was back in 2002 my first Firefax I bought in 2002 and now I feel really old but yeah I've been planning since I was at school since I was at secondary school which is when I was 11 which is just crazy uh, my green cow hi Daisy what's one crafty creative hobby you haven't tried yet and really want to crochet I I see all of these people sharing these projects of crochet projects and I'd love to be able to crochet, but I don't know anyone who crochets um, to teach me. So I'd have to go on YouTube and stuff, and I don't always find videos massively helpful. I don't know, maybe one day, maybe one day I'll learn crochet, but there are so many creative projects I've got on the go that I never end up finishing or have time to do that I don't know. Maybe, maybe one day, who knows? Ooh. I'd love to be able to crochet a little blanket that would be lovely um mm. whoa ray is it whoa ray what's your favorite thing to decorate your planner with washi tape always washi tape, always washi tape. um mm. millie's got millie bff eve got two questions you cheeky little monkey uh firstly what book do you use for your faux bonici and where to buy I use the Paper Chase faux leather gridded, it's faux leather soft cover gridded notebook and it's the Paper Chase one, A5, 
Paper Chase hardly ever have it in on their website or in their shop, so I bought mine from Amazon. If you just go on Amazon and search for Paper Chase Gridded Notebook, it comes up. Jobs are good. Um, and then she also asks, favourite washi tape? Favourite washi tape? Asking me to choose a favourite washi tape is like asking me to choose a favourite child. I can't decide. I love Luna as much as Florence. I love my gold glittery washi tape as much as my gold spot washi tape. So I'm sorry, that's just, I can't, I can't answer that. Spidey Spud, that is an awesome name. Have you, have you always had rabbits and guinea pigs or have you had other pets too? Okay, so as an adult, being the primary caregiver and looker after her of animals, it's always been guinea pigs and rabbits and I've had I've had as little as one and as most as many as of one species this is like I say rabbits I've had as little as one as many as four at one time I've had groups of girls groups of boys and mixed gender groups um, and it's always been bunnies and guineas at the same time um, there's been some overlap as p some have moved on and through and stuff but mainly it's been guineas and bunnies. As a child, when I lived at home with my parents, we, um, my parents had a cat before I was born, and then I don't know when he died, bless him, must have been when up before I was a teenager, because I can't remember. And then we had a German Shepherd dog, which I grew up with, and I was 18 when he passed away, bless him. Um, but also as a child, I had rabbits. I never had guinea pigs as a child though. Um, rabbits and mice which my parents used to help me look after so while I'm on the subject of animals okay and rabbits one of my if any of you watch my day in the life vlogs one of my most frequent persistent questions snarky comments bitchy comments is about having indoor animals and the smell and the most common concern or statement is that I let them pee and poo all over my house I don't. They don't. Um, sometimes I show them before they've been cleaned out, okay, and there'll be extra poop around, but it isn't that big a deal, right? So they live permanently in the utility room with access to the kitchen, which is a hard floor, okay? I'm actually quite a hygienic person and I'm always hoovering and mopping the floor. They are only allowed in the rest of the house, like now they're in the dining room with me, they're only allowed in here when they're under supervision, like when I'm in here with them. And they're trained, they're litter trained. Well, they're not, they don't have a litter tray, but in terms of wee wee, they only ever go in the same place in their bed, which is behind the door in their hutch, okay? That's the only place they do their wee wee. Mainly, they do their poos in there as well, but occasionally they do a little bit of, it's kind of like scent marking, territory marking, they will poop a little bit outside, okay? It doesn't smell, I'll tell you now, it does not smell, and it's tiny little hard bullets of just hay, basically. It's not like dog poo that stinks, or cat poo, it's tiny little bullets like raisins that don't smell, and they're just dried up hay. And, yeah, I walk around my house barefoot, but I don't go and stand in their poo, and I'm regularly just, they're on those blankets in there to protect my floor and to give them comfort, and I just hook the blanket up and flick, you know, and then, wipe sweep it up but no they don't poo and pee all over my house and i'm not a skanky cow um but every single day in the life video i post where i show the animals someone always mentions it so i've just like put that in my q a because it's the most commonly asked question mm. told you this video was gonna be long didn't i uh little blue seal if you could pick one journal and three other art supplies what would you choose and she also asks, am I doing one book July? Yeah, I'm doing one book July. Oh, don't make me pick again. I don't know. I don't know. I... Why pick it? Why pick? Why, why pick if you don't have to? <laughs> Cop out. Uh, art supplies, pencil, rubber, black waterproof pen, uh, aqua brush and watercolours. But don't make me choose a notebook. RM Parry 26. Do you like to read? If so, what kind of books are your favourite author? I love to read. I do read a lot. And at the moment, I haven't really been doing anything in my Fobonichi because I 
uh, only have so much time in the evening to do activities that I like to do whether that's art or craft or read you know because there's other stuff that goes on isn't there like sorting out the girls cooking cleaning spending time with your other half you know that kind of stuff so you only have so much YouTube videos I only have so much time of an evening to do certain stuff but I love to read my favorite books are about books fictional books about books are, or about a library or a magic book or something like that don't know why books about books oh, I love other than that I love books about witches I um, I quite happily admit it I love my YA books and my vampires and magic and stuff like that when I read I like to read fiction that I can escape into another world I don't want to read stuff that's like really close to normality I want to read something that's totally make-believe so yeah witches and stuff um, favorite author not really I have a few favorite books but I don't have like a favorite author that I always read per se but yeah that's the kind of books I like to read I will give anything a go I'm not so keen on like chick lit or like I don't really like horror or sci-fi or crime thrillery ones or stand alone I like an element of horror and thriller in say a witchy book but not like all about that I'm not keen on Mills and Boone type lovey dovey gushy stuff really either uh, Gem Louise, I've just started getting into planning, journaling and getting crafty. What would you recommend as a starter kit to help make things look pretty? Kind of depends on what you want to do and I think decorating is a really personal thing as well. Like uh, a year and a half ago I hated decorating my planner. Very minimal. Now I love it. Uh, People change, what you like changes, and I think it's quite personal as well. I would say a staple for me though is washi tape, a good start. I don't colour code or anything, but I know a lot of people do. I personally just prefer black pen throughout, blue if I'm grabbing something. I very often use writing pencil so I can rub stuff out because I'm not a fan of friction pens. I've never have been. Um, sticky notes are always good because you can move stuff around. Just whatever floats your boat. Like when it comes to journaling and stuff, just ephemera that you find around about, like save ticket stubs and things, that kind of stuff. And just go with it. Just, 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 no one starts with a massive kit. Um, everyone that's kind of got lots of stuff has kind of been building up. You And you don't need stuff to plan and you don't need stuff to get creative and journal. I sometimes think, again, like with the whole One Book July thing, the less you have, sometimes the more creative you get with it because you make do with what you've got, if that makes sense. So just just pick something and just go with it and just see how you end up. Um, live Love Planners, where is your favourite place to journal or plan? Uh, my favourite place to journal is in the garden, definitely. Love, particularly on a nice day, I love to journal in the garden. Plan, I don't really have a place. I mean, I kind of plan on the go. Or I, I'll take my planner out in the garden with me. I sit at the breakfast bar and do a bit of planning and I do it at my desk as well. So I don't really have a favourite place to plan. I just do it wherever I am, wherever I kind of feel the need to do some planning really. Wilma Willis, who do you follow regularly on social media and what routines do you try to keep to as home worker to stop my like Melise? I can't even pronounce it. I guess that's to stop being in a rut. Who do you follow regularly on social media? Oh my god, loads of guys. Uh, um, far too many people that I can't keep up with, really. So, um, I don't know who to say. I don't know, because I have such varied interests. I follow journalists, I follow planner people, I follow book people, I follow um, garden type people, all kinds of stuff. So I follow loads of people. What do I do as a homeworker to stop? Let me go and look up what that word means. <laughs> okay, so the only definitions I can find are about being ill and onset of disease and uneasiness. So I'm guessing what you mean is stop getting in a slump 
or in a rut is that right so if it's if it's not what you meant then I'm sorry let me know what routines do I try and do as a homeworker right one of the reasons are one of the reasons not the reason one of the reasons I did not like working in HR was routines I'm not very good at routines I hate being stuck at the same desk with the same set of people doing the same set of sort of jobs um, I've shut the door because it's loud. Um, doing the same sort of jobs day in, day out. I hated it. I don't do routines, which is why I have to make to-do lists because, and people who see my to-do list probably laugh at me because on my to-do list, right, there are things that I have to do around the house as a, in terms of housework, like make the bed, empty the dishwasher, clean the girls out. I have to do those every single day without fail. Um, Hoover, because we've got animals. Um, every single day without fail. So you would think I wouldn't need to put those on a to-do list because it would just become naturally to me that I'm like, oh yeah, make the bed, do this, do that. But because I don't really have a particular routine, I have to write a to-do list down. Um, and I don't always say clean the girls out at the same time every single day or I don't make my bed at the same time every single day. Depends on what I'm doing, you know? Like sometimes, sometimes I can get up anywhere between six and, what time? Half seven every day. I mean, John leaves the house at about eight-ish to go to work and I'm always up because we have breakfast together. And so sometimes I'll get straight up and um, start working, do a bit of work. Then I'll kind of say, clean the girls out and go for a shower. Sometimes I'll get up, have a shower and then do stuff. So. I first thing in the morning I always write a to-do list and my to-do list is always changing as the day goes along. I never ever get anything, well I hardly ever get stuff accomplished on my to-do list because my brain goes at 19 times to the dozen sometimes and um, I, I tell you what guys, I could put out more content on my YouTube channel and my blog, I could put out something every single day because my mind whirs and I have more ideas than time in which to do things. So being stuck in a rut isn't actually something that I struggle with at all. Um, and in fact, John recently has had to be really strict with me and is, he is in, he's enforcing me to have some rest and break time because I was wearing myself out because I do I, there's just so many things I want to do, could do, need to do. I'm a very driven person, um, which is like how I ended up changing my career a couple of times. No, how many times? Yeah, twice. Um, I'm quite a driven person, so I'm not kind of, I don't just sit there and like go, oh, you know, I wasn't just sat at my desk at work going, oh, I hate my job, but not doing anything about it, which everybody else around me was doing. And those people are still at that same job that I was at. Um, I was just like, I hate this job. What can I do? Um, so I went and got another job that allowed me some day release time to go to college, that kind of stuff. So I know that's not always convenient or everyone's able to do that. Um, I worked my nuts off. I did two jobs and went to college as well. I did one full-time job over... I did like 40 hours over four days, plus another job, plus college. Oh my God, that was hard work. Um, but I did it just to get there. Um, so being stuck in a rut isn't something that really bothers me. Um, I love what I do and I can always do more, always do more. And if anything, I have to rein myself in um, to not, do so much so I don't really know how to answer that I guess for me I need to have more defined this is rest time this is work time and when your work becomes something that you really really enjoy doing that's really hard to get a balance right but it did take John to say look come on you're burning yourself out you know you just sit down and read for half an hour or something because I'm not a workaholic I just really enjoy what I do and my brain works faster than I can work. I hope that's answered it and I don't think it really has. Um, Bobbly Creations, will you be doing a Brimbles, up, Brimbles unboxing video? Always, always do an unboxing video of the Brimbles box because um, I didn't start doing that till April um, because I didn't know if people wanted to do that because I feel really uncomfortable still doing salesy type videos. Uh, 
yeah. But yeah, every month on the 1st I will do um, an unboxing video of what was in the box. In fact, someone did ask me something. I haven't put it... Did I put it on here? I think I've missed it. Someone did ask me something about the boxes. Hold on, I'll find... It was on Facebook. Maria Rose asks, how do you source things for your boxes and store? Like, what process do you go through to find new items? Where do you look? How far in advance do you plan what goes into them? Have there been things you've gotten for a box and not used because they weren't what you expected? Right. <laughs> Let me break this down. Do I, how do I source various things? And kind of goes along the same line with the themes, okay? So I come up with the themes based on products that I find. I follow a couple of... Um, agencies that are trendsetter agencies okay and they basically do forecasting for what is going to be popular in advance see i work bloody hard sometimes um <laughs> so yeah so they're kind of like um doing a lot of the work for you like they're picking up on what's trending what's going to be hot what's going to be not that kind of stuff so i follow a few of them um i go to trade shows i source the scour the internet I go everywhere um, so I come up with the themes the themes back in like November last year 2014 I launched the box in tw um, in December 2014 and by the time I'd launched it I had all the themes for the whole year already worked out um, I was gonna do a monthly subscription box a long time ago and then someone else came out with one and there was only one box and that never went anywhere and then I thought about doing it again and then Linky's um, Leah from Linky's dream she came out with the Linky's box and so I put it to bed again then and then when Leah stopped I thought well maybe now is the time that I do the monthly subscription box and now there's loads of them on the market which is fine because I think there's place and room for everybody out there and I think a lot of people have their own USP, unique selling point if you didn't know, and different tastes and stuff. So as you know mine are all themed um, and yeah it's blooming hard work sometimes trying to source the products to meet the theme sometimes. Not always, mainly it's hard because I, I like to choose as much as possible small independent suppliers, crafters, people like that. And it's blooming hard. Um, a lot of people have really long leeways on it. Um, you know, I've got stuff that's already been commissioned for the end of the year. Um, and I'm only a small person as well. Like, really hard to get a balance of products and it's hard work. Um, but I get that from various from various avenues. I shop around a lot. Um, uh, what process do you go through? I don't really go through a process other than like shopping around a lot. Where do you look? The internet mainly. Um, trade shows. How far in advance do you plan what goes into them? Well, as I said, all the themes are set until the end of the year. I need to start thinking now about next year's boxes. Um, because also, if all the dashboards that go in the boxes, I paint the dashboards and I make all the dashboards and that takes quite a long time. Um, so I have to do it quite far in advance because I also have to get them printed and everything. Uh, so how far in advance? Quite far in advance. Sometimes I'm down to the wire. Sometimes suppliers let you down, which happens an incredible amount of time suppliers let me down and I have to source something at the last minute that happens loads um, I try where possible so the box is a £15 for subscription and £18 if you buy one off box my goal is to make sure that the RRP of each box is £20 if not more um, it's usually more sometimes it's like like this month was like nearly 23 last month was like 22 or 20 I can't remember so I try and make it so that it's really good value for, for money for you guys. Um, but sometimes that's hard work to try and find all the products 
that kind of work together as a collective product like to go with a the theme because people who buy my boxes aren't just planners and they're not just journalists or you know there's a I have kind of a different audience so I try and create a box that kind of covers a broad spectrum of people but coordinates well together and comes in at the, at the right sort of price bracket for you guys um oh god I've just mucked that up there oh what was the last bit of that I'm sorry sorry I know me and technology so I'm a paper based planner guys um uh, have there been things you've gotten for a box and not used because they weren't what you expected yeah but only once because um I usually try and see the products first like I will either place an order with a company or I'll ask for a sample or something like that if um so if any of you guys make anything or sell anything get in touch with me because I always love to hear from you um but the I always want a product I always want something that looks nice and is packaged nice as a product and I always get a sample up front first where are you going Flopsy Flo? you want to go out Hang on then, I'll open the door. Yeah? Yes, but I shut the door because the fan's noisy. She's just sitting in the door. Okay, so I hope that's... I told you this video was going to be long, guys. So if you're still here, well done. Uh, uh, Rebecca Who, I love watching your YouTube videos. Oh, thank you. And the one that sticks out is when you created the bunny and how you talk about how you changed your life and career path by attending school and doing something you loved instead of grumbling. So inspiring. Thank you. Um, have you ever taught classes? Other than um, in, in person, physical, what are you eating Florence? Bit of cardboard. Um, other than physical classes to learn to teach people how to make bath bombs, no I've never done any classes. Um, do you know I often get asked by people to if I'd run classes. And I thought about doing a class and I was put to the post to it. But I have, again, I'm not always a very good business person in this much as I have my own self-doubts and disbeliefs and I kind of think who would, who would want to buy my classes? That's one thing that stops me. Second thing that stops me is what would I do a class on? And the third one is, as I've said, I'm not a very good business person and I feel uncomfortable taking money from people and... I end up giving away a lot of my time and knowledge and stuff here on YouTube. Um, but I don't know if I've often thought about it, and I'd love to do an online class. That would be great, um, and I'd love to teach. But I get I just wouldn't know what to teach about. If I did finally get over my inner critic and gremlins over no one would do it and what would I do it on and how would I charge people? If I finally got over that, um, I don't know what I would do. It's on. I did have one idea, but as I said, someone else is doing that idea now and so I don't want to do that because it would look like I'm copying them um, but we'll see, we'll see, who knows um, CJ, hello CJ <laughs> tap tap is this thing on, she did a huge one and I love her um, will you be doing more day in the life videos? She's missing the week's meals, the whoop whoop of the piggies, John and his scrumptious looking breads, <laughs> and my giggles and explanations of life. Yeah, I got a bit stressed out, I kind of sort of said about this, I kind of got a bit stressed out and needed a break from life. Some stuff's been going on in the background, in a personal life, and kind of all got to me a little bit much, too much. So I kind of needed a bit of a break from stuff for a while, so I wasn't doing any day in the life videos. But I'm back doing more day in the life videos. Um, I know you guys, I really enjoy doing day in the life videos, and I love watching other people's day in the life videos. Um, I am going to do vloggist, which um, means doing a day in the life video every day in August. So you might get sick of seeing me, CJ. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do a day in the life every day in August. Um, other than that, I don't know. Potentially, um, I may have a lot going on at the end of the year, not really sure yet. So I don't know if I'll be doing Vlogtober or Vlogmas this year, but we'll have to see. Um, if I can, then I will, or maybe I'll only do like 
part of it or something we'll see but but yeah i'm kind of back camera battery ran out on me and that was a fully charged battery so it shows you how much i talk I did tell you this is going to be a long video and i'm roasting now so yeah i'm back but who knows i'm back but good again um who knows how long for just play it by ear um i don't know from youtube cherry asks as someone who is obsessed by scrapbooking, how have you avoided falling into the rabbit hole of scrapping? Have you tried or are you not interested? Oh, I had a mad moment. Right, so basically, all of my photos used to be done, like, like digital photos. I used to do digital, uh, digital albums. And then I had um, a mad moment when I thought I wanted to do scrapbooking. Uh, it didn't last very long because I didn't really get my photos printed. Um, I was never really happy with the quality of printing at home and stuff. And so I used to wait until I'd got enough ready to send them off to get them printed, yada, yada, yada. By which time the moment had already been lost for me really and I never really went back and did it. So I wasn't really that interested. I still do my digital photography books. Um, digital books and get them slightly sent off and get them printed uh, I use blurb.com to do that uh, I like using scrapbook stuff and I like the idea of scrapbooking but not in a, like a 12 by 12 or an 8 by 8 album I kind of like to incorporate that kind of stuff into my journals and going down the line I really want to get one of those little pogo printer thingies so that I can print and journal as I go because sometimes I feel like the moment's lost still with the digital um, photo books, um, but yeah, and I, I'm forever being drawn to Project Life, um, but again, I'm not sure about the whole printing of the photos thing. Um, you know, like sitting down at the com <laughs> sitting down at the computer and then uploading them somewhere and getting them printed, and then when they come back, having to like backdate because I feel like sometimes then like the moment's lost. So that's kind of why I don't really do scrapbooking, but I do, I do love playing with scrapbooking supplies in um, my journals and planners any tips let me know um so that's it that's all my questions thank you so much for asking me all those questions some of them are hard i hope i've answered them all okay um if you've got any follow-up questions to those questions then let me know um we're john and i are going to do our couples q a soon um so we've got questions for that so um, if you, so me and John have still got to film our couples Q&A or he's got to do his questions. So if you've still got questions or if you didn't think to ask, then ask them. John's going to answer his questions and we'll answer our couple questions together. And that's it. I'm going because it's been far too long. I hope you've enjoyed your cup of tea and um, I'll chat to you soon. Keep cool. Bye.